Hi everyone, and welcome to the Frank and Mary Show. And don't change the channel, this is the Frank and Mary Show. Uh, Arthur, the normal host, is not here today. He is down with his brand new grandson in uh, DC, I believe. Uh, I'm Doug Peck with Seniors Helping Seniors, but we're still keeping the same format of the Frank and Mary Show. Uh, as you know, Frank and Mary are uh, Arthur is a elder law attorney with Myrick and O'Connell in Westboro and in Worcester. And while this show is not about legal matters, it is for people much like Frank and Mary who have spent a long time in Southboro and now want to mm. stay here as they grow older. And so this is about the people that you need to know or services that you need to know about to be able to really have a quality of life in and stay in Southboro as you age. So I have a, uh, a very uh, a different type of guest. Not a, I shouldn't say a different type of guest. We're going into a subject area that we haven't talked about before, but one I feel everybody needs to know about, particularly if they are going to stay uh, you know, at home and sort of have the wish, as Arthur says, to be sort of buried in the backyard. So I want to introduce to you Michael Onet from Faith and Family Supportive Services and Hospice. They are located in Marlboro, but they service the, all the local area. Michael, Good to welcome see you. to the show. Thank you Good for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So we usually get started by sort of telling me a little bit about yourself, and we'll talk about what hospice is afterwards, but sort of about yourself and how you got into hospice, because you're the founder of this hospice, yes. is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've been working in, in the hospice community for the better part of 25 years. Okay. My, the bulk of my mature adult life, mm -hmm. and I'm getting, getting more maturity the older I get. <laughs> um, started in South Florida. Um, I, had a, I had a friend of a friend uh, mm -hmm. whose family founded a hospice, one of the oldest hospices in the country. Oh. And I helped them um, with their development and how to spread the word and what is hospice, mm -hmm. what is the true meaning of hospice. Um, and it's an area I never left. I, I've truly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked nationally uh, on behalf of hundreds of hospices, and there's close okay. to 5,000 nationally. Really? Yes. Um, hospice is really interesting. In the last 20 years, because of the growth and the population growth and the aged mm -hmm. population with baby boomers, mm -hmm. hospice now is a larger industry financially than home care. Really? So. You have 17,000 plus home care companies, mm -hmm. 4,800 to 5,000 hospices, mm -hmm. and it's now a $17 billion industry wow. nationwide. How old is it altogether? When did it really start? Were you Hosp one of the hospices, um, hospices started in, in the middle 70s. Okay. Hospice of Connect was the first hospice. Okay. Um, they were a uh, nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Hospice is a word which means a variation of hospitality. Mm -hmm. It comes from the Middle Ages mm -hmm. when you had people that. Uh, we're going through the plagues, yeah. and they had nowhere to go. Oh, so the modern philosophy of hospice uh, is a little different than the Middle Ages. Oh, yeah, things have changed a little, a little bit, bit since yeah. then. Um, it's a matter of really understanding the true nature of what hospice is, and there's a lot of mis under, miscommunication, right. and and people don't really understand the true nature and the full scope of hospice. Okay, it's vastly different when people really think on their first impulse. Okay, and that's what we want to talk about because yeah. people. <clears throat> you know, tend to think of it as sort of the very end of life type of care. And so I, I know having dealt with some hospices that oftentimes they don't get called until it's like the last six weeks or so, you know, of someone's, of someone's life. But that's not really what it should be about or is about. Right. In, in some ways, the hospice community missed the mark when they called it end of life care. Okay. Because you think of those waning moments. Mm -hmm. In reality, it's care for the life that you have. Okay, I like that. Care for the life that you have. There's two ways that people pass. Okay. Quickly, mm -hmm. perhaps a heart attack or a car accident, mm -hmm. and slowly, mm -hmm. could be weeks, days, months, or even years. Mm -hmm. So once the decline of, of your physical status starts to happen, when you can't mainline your baseline of health and vitality, okay. the decline kicks in. It's, I use the analogy all the time with doctors. Okay. When a doctor likes to go snow skiing, Mm -hmm. The first 10 feet of the mountain, when you go down, how fast are you going? Yeah. He goes, oh, two, three miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And so I might ask a doctor, well, how fast are you going at the bottom of the mountain? Yeah. Oh, I'm doing 25 or 30. Yeah, yeah. At what point can you ski up? Yeah. You can't. You can't. That's when hospital starts at the first 10 feet. Okay. So when you recognize declines, 
then you know we, we do our supportive care services to make you as strong and vital as possible for as long as we okay. can. It's to bolster, it's supportive care for when you know that you're confronted with an end of life issue. Right, you're not gonna get better essentially. Sometimes people graduate. Okay. Which means yeah. that you can go on and off hospice. Okay. If you're gaining weight and, you, and you're having a lot of care and support, mm -hmm. they call it fluffing and buffing, mm -hmm. people start doing better. Okay. Things go into remission, you get a little stronger health, mm -hmm. we're moving you around a little bit, getting your mm -hmm. blood flowing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, wow, we, we annotate every visit. Okay. And we go, wow, this person might be, <clears throat> let's call the doctor, let's get people, let's get people involved. She mm -hmm. might graduate. Mm -hmm. So hospice is not a, a death sentence. Okay. It's That's not. That's good to know. It's a supportive service mm -hmm. for as much as you need it. Okay. It's also equally for the families okay. and their friends. Mm -hmm. And we'll, it, you know, that it's uh, the only area of healthcare based on a philosophy, body, mind, and spirit. Okay. So, and if you think about the government mm -hmm. mandating a program that focuses on the body, mm -hmm. your mind, and your spirit, mm -hmm. it's really out of the box. Yeah, it is. It, in some ways, it's a little bit old school, earth crunchy. Mm -hmm. However, when you break down um, uh, the three components of what make us human beings, right? We have our right. spirituality about us. Mm -hmm. um, we have our psycho psychology component, mm -hmm. and we have our physical nature. Mm -hmm. So, when a lot of people refer to uh, when they pass on, mm -hmm. they're sh simply shedding their bodies, and mm -hmm. their spirit can live on. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a different thought process. Um, of that dynamic, but we have to honor all of it. And it's okay. mandated by law that we also help the families even when the patient has passed. Okay, oh really? Yes, okay. it's a 13 month mandated benefit of okay. free counseling, free chaplaincy, to make sure that the family is being supportive. If you can imagine your loved one who's thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna make it, what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. Their next thought is, what's gonna happen to my wife, my mm -hmm. husband, my daughter? Right my son, my brother, mm -hmm. and seeing that they're being counseled, they feel it, and they also recognize that their family's being taken care of, makes them feel a little bit okay. better about what they know they're gonna be okay. Okay. And that's important. Yeah, I wanna go back to one thing you said. Sure. Because you talked about a th the government, you know, doing this. So tell us how, you know, because again, we, people wanna understand, how does this work? Am I paying for it? Who, who pays for this? You know, that's a and, great question. That's you know, one of the first questions. One of the first questions. Yeah, I mean, because you're talking about people coming into your home or you going to a hospice. Again, we can talk about those right. two alternatives. Um, but talk just first about sort of, you know, the, the there is a, people want to know, you know, is this is going to cost me? Hospice, I would say, is over 90% um, supply through Medicaid. Okay. Uh, uh, Medicare, Medicare. 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 Okay. Um, there's another ad adjunct, which is through, through uh, Medicaid, but mostly through Medicare. Okay. Um, a lot of insurance companies will work with the hospice to pay for it. Okay. I would say most most cases, the patient feels no financial burden whatsoever. Okay. That includes supplies. Okay. So if you have, you need a catheter oh. taken care of. Really. If you have incontinence products, if you need diapers. Okay. Mm -hmm. They cover it. Mm -hmm. They make sure that the bed bedding is proper. They'll make sure you're completely comfortable. Okay, so if you were at home, they would bring in a hospital bed? Bring a bed you? in. Really? If you, if, okay. you, if you need oxygen, they'll bring an oxygen tank in. Okay. If you need something more elaborate, they'll do that too. Okay. Um, hospice, if you think of it, with the base word of hospitality, okay. you think of home. Hospice, basically the job of hospice is to keep you where you consider home. Okay. And that could be assisted living, it could be in your home, it could be in your family's home. Sometimes if the person is very acute, might be in a hospital or a hospice house. Okay. But we really want people to stay home. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And so you're, you're what, when I, I can see when people think about all these different things going on, you're the coordinator for that though, right? I mean, you're, I, I don't have to go order the diapers and then, then somebody, you're, you're coordinating right. all those services for, the, for your Yeah, we have a person. case manager. Oh, good. That's okay. a nurse. Yeah. On our team, you'll have... Volunteers, okay, mandated by law. Okay, the government mandates you have volunteers on staff to really? do a certain percentage of your service hours. Mm -hmm. It's a service mm -hmm. because if you think about it right now, in Massachusetts, we might lose a thousand people every two weeks. Really, forty-six percent of all people that pass in Massachusetts mm -hmm. go through hospice. We, that's a that's a higher number than I thought. It, people have no idea yeah. the scope of what this what this community can provide, but mm -hmm. also equally as important. If one person knows 20 people, yeah. 
in those 1,000 people every two weeks, those 20,000 people that experience a loss right. might have grief. Right. You don't get over a loss. Right. You learn how to cope and how to manage it. Mm -hmm. So that's why the psychosocial is so important for the families. Mm -hmm. So we have chaplains <clears throat> trained in every religion and spirituality you can think of. Okay. It's non-secular. We, we pretty much have a, have a voice and a representative from every walk of life you can think of, every faith. <clears throat> We also have licensed clinical social workers, which is an advanced degree mm -hmm. to, to provide counseling. Okay. It's free. Wow. As much as you need it, we'll do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You also have home care aides, certified nurses assistants that will do the, the uh, buffing and puffing and, and making buffing and making mm -hmm. sure you're safe and, and secure in the household. Mm -hmm. They might help you with, uh, with bathing, mm -hmm. helping do some, some light mm -hmm. home duties, mm -hmm. household chores. Um, we have licensed practical nurses, we have nurses, mm -hmm. we have doctors mm -hmm. that will actually, will actually go to your house occasionally to, to, to re-verify what the nurses are finding. Okay. Wow. Um, you have a whole support team in place. You might have eight different people that are involved with your case alone. Okay, and they tend to stay with that case once they, you we yeah. pick it up, they're there. Sometimes so. if you have a nurse, might go on vacation. Okay, yeah. But you're gonna know way ahead of time when the nurse is mm -hmm. gonna be leaving for a week or a mm -hmm. few days or a three day weekend. Mm -hmm. there, it's not, there's, there's no shock and awe. It's okay. very consistent. It's a warm place to land. Okay. And I know because my father went through hospice at home and he needed morphine. Right. So I know that there are even nurses that come in and will administer the morphine or make sure you have it if it's in the other um, uh, pill form. At one point, I'm not sure of the statistic today, but at one point hospices were, were um, purchasing for distribution mm -hmm. more morphine than any other entity in the world. Really? In this yeah. country. Now, yeah. pain's a very misunderstood component. Okay. Pain is the most treatable condition we have. Mm -hmm. However, we're afraid of it. Yeah. Now, understandably, because mm -hmm. I've lost two brothers from, from addiction with heroin, mm -hmm. so I understand the dark side. Mm -hmm. However, if you're in pain, we have specialists mm -hmm. that'll manage your pain. We want you to be as aware as possible, okay. and yet pain-free. Okay. So there's a nice balance where the experts really measure this and they're palliative care experts. They really know how to make sure that you're comfortable okay. while maintaining your sensibilities. Okay. And we have patients that literally, you wanna be comfortable. Right. And you wanna be able to focus on other things like family yeah. and sharing the family dynamic rather mm -hmm. than pain. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's an art yeah. if you do it right. And hospices are artists when it comes to pain management and comfort care, okay. supportive care. So you have, because you, again you mentioned another word, palliative care, and so how, that's a complement to hospice, is that correct? I mean, you can, well, well you put it your way. Technically, right? it's a subcomponent. Okay. So, if you have a lingering illness, mm -hmm. palliative care may kick in. Okay. So, if I have a, a lingering illness, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or something that's very debilitating, but I'm not going to die from it. Okay. It's not going to make me have a, a questionable lifespan. It's managing the long-term effects of something It's normally chronic. ambulatory. You can do it in the home. You can do it sometimes in mm -hmm. the assisted living or the nursing homes mm -hmm. or in different environments. However, it's when you're not considered having six months or left, mm -hmm. less to live. Okay. So hospice, I would say that probably 60, 65% of people who are on palliative care at one point or another will probably enter hospice at some point. Mm -hmm. Now, hospice could be from an aged condition. My body is just, I'm getting old, and I'm okay. slowing down, and I'm starting to go down the mountain faster. Mm -hmm. Supportive care. Okay. It's beautiful for elder care. Really? My friend's parents get support mm -hmm. because their bodies are failing just from age. Mm -hmm. So you have dementia, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. age scenarios, organ failure, all these different factors that kick in. Mm -hmm. And we're there to help everybody. When you show the decline, we're there for you. Okay. Yeah, so that's, what attracted you to something like that? I mean, it's, uh, you know, um, it's, I don't want to say it's depressing because I don't <clears> think <throat> it is. I mean, I think it's, I think it's a great service because you're, you know, you're, right. you're trying to, pr to uh, keep a quality of life for, for a person as long as possible. I mean, knowing that they're not necessarily going to get better in the long run, but you still want to keep whatever quality you can there for them right. to have. Right. Well, for me personally, it, it's all about being self-aware. Mm -hmm. there's, a, a, there's a purpose and meaning to life. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the meaning of life? That's, yeah. the, big, that's the big question yeah. out there. Well, the meaning of life is, is finding out what you're built to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you a giving nature? Are you a teacher by nature? Can mm -hmm. you be a school teacher or teach other people or help them benefit from your experiences? Mm -hmm. And 
the purpose is to honor it without without questioning it. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is an area like I feel good about helping others, mm -hmm. and I don't care what I get in return because my effort is my return. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the meaning of life is to honor what we're made to do, and the purpose is to honor it with faith and just go for it, okay. and not worry about it. If you're doing what you're made to do, yeah. you're not working. You're not working. Yeah. I never worked a day in my life. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, it's, uh, it doesn't feel like work. It really doesn't. <laughs> I want to go back to one other thing you talked about because it's it's in part of your uh, title, your the name of your company, which is Faith and Family, or is it Family and Faith? But anyway, faith is in there. You talked a little bit about it that you represent all different types of faith. So you don't come in saying there's, there's not a Catholic hospice or a Jewish hospice or a Protestant right. one. You're, you you help the folks that that uh, that that are inclined that way right. to <clears throat> have the right type of care that they the spiritual care that they want well think about the word faith if you're breaking down and from a very abstract basis if i say faith what does that mean to you mm -hmm. if i'm religious mm -hmm. whatever religion yeah you you, right. you honor and right. follow Okay. If your person understands what love really is, I mm -hmm. have faith that love I experience with my family or my children or, or whoever else is mm -hmm. real. I know it's real because I have faith that emotion's real. Mm -hmm. So faith means different things to different people. Okay. So it's, but, but we're there to support you in whatever base faith holds within your heart. Okay. Because most people have faith in something. Yes. Yeah. And that's really important to honor because if you don't have that faith component, now faith in family does mean something. Mm -hmm. Faith is very important, mm -hmm. and family is very important mm -hmm. also. Your family could be your friends. Yep. Okay. It could be your neighborhood. It could be your community. It could be your neighbors. So we want to be that warm uh, blanket of compassion that comes in when you're at, at your most troubled time mm -hmm. and help you feel validated that you're important, that you're relevant, that your life mattered. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in a position where you're being properly supported, mm -hmm. you feel a little bit hopeless. <clears throat> yeah. And alone. Yeah. And nobody should be alone. Right. It should be on your terms. And people need to uh, full, come full circle in life with mm -hmm. dignity. Mm -hmm. um, because death is not a clinical event. Hmm. It's not. You're born. Mm -hmm. Now I have an existence. Mm -hmm. And when I pass away, it's basically I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. So it's not clinical because you can't maintain it. It's okay. a spiritual event because just like you're, you become self-aware, a sentient being as a child as mm -hmm. you're born, mm -hmm. that yeah. same essence is, not, is no longer going to be a clinically maintained entity. Right. You shed your body right. and, and yeah. your spirit goes on, um, mm. and everybody has a different mindset on that. Okay. And we honor all of you're them. You're honored. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So uh, looking at the nuts and bolts, somebody, somebody calls you. Who, who go, does somebody come out to the house? Is that how it works? Let's say the person's We'll go home. to you. You'll go to, you'll come to we'll us. Come to, so okay. sometimes is it a case manager or is it you or is it? We, we have specialists. Okay. I would say we have, we have a, we have a care team. Okay. You make a phone call to us. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what's going on. You mm -hmm. just know my life is not the way it used mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. We'll do an assessment. It's free. Okay. So, okay, here's you, you're holding on. Mm hmm We'll make an assessment. Mm -hmm. If we see that there's an active decline mm -hmm. that's bolstered by the by the physicians mm -hmm. to make sure this is appropriate, mm -hmm. then we'll we'll turn on the hospice team and okay. we'll get it going. Um, but you you call us up. It could be your doctor that calls. Okay. A son or a daughter, mm -hmm. husband or a wife, mm -hmm. a friend calling mm -hmm. on behalf of. Mm -hmm. um, you can't elect hospice unless you sign off on a right to self determination. What does that mean? What it means is I acknowledge that I don't have a way of curing my condition. Oh, okay. So I'm okay with ah. accepting the supportive care okay. in lieu of chemotherapy or a transplant or what have you. Okay. Because they're not going to work. They're not going to work. Because okay. you're really, it's a different mindset. Mm -hmm. This is about making you as strong as you can mm -hmm. with, with the acknowledgement and recognition that you're probably not going to bounce back from this one. Okay. So a person that holds a health care proxy, for example, particularly let's say someone with dementia who can't really make that choice, they can make that choice for a them? A very difficult decision. It's a very difficult because decision. Because people think of it as a death sentence. Yeah. People it, are... They, they, they're, they're, they, they feel that if they, once they commit to it, it's going to happen. Right. What it is is right. an acknowledgement yeah. by choosing and selecting hospice. That. I'm, I'm accepting the fact that my friend or my loved one right. is in a process of transitioning. Right. 
they're on a decline. And That's I want something good for them. I mean, I don't want them to just. So the proxy is very interesting because we have situations where the wife is the proxy for the husband, mm -hmm. and then the wife has yeah. an issue, yeah. and she needs a proxy. Yeah. And then how do I make a decision for my husband if I have um, a mental health issue? Mm -hmm. So we have to create a succession chain, mm -hmm. make sure every base is covered. This is the most regulated really? industry or, or service realm you could ever imagine. We annotate everything. So at any given time, we could have somebody else walk in, look at our charts and our note taking, wow. and know exactly what's being done to the minute. Wow. It's very regulated, but it's also very important because it's a building block of care. Mm -hmm. And how can you go and have a new person enter into the dynamic without really knowing what's happened before? Right. So A plus B equals C. In this case, C is care. You yeah. need all those things lined up in, in the proper line. Okay, yeah. I can understand that because even in, in my business, which is a home health care business, I have seen uh, the caregiver pass before the person that they're taking care of because of, of the stress. They've been doing it a long time. It's stressful. Sometimes it's a stroke or a heart-related issue that no one sees coming. So it, I can see how things really can change. Yeah, we, you know? we, we do have a, a um, we're very predictive. We're always in a, um, a very aware state. Okay. So we're always looking for factors. So we've had patients that they're sort of maintaining, there's a decline, and then we see the loved one who's really declining. Mm -hmm. I said, you need help too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, Can we have a talk, discussion? that's very important. Are we talking yeah. to family members? Yeah. Um, and sometimes one spouse will pass away before the other, and it's now they're alone. So we go there right. more often. Right. We supplement. Okay. Nothing's worse than saying, oh, well, we're going to, uh, we don't want hospice because mm -hmm. they think it's hastening death. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure you're fed, make sure you're hydrated properly. Mm -hmm. We're not going to force you to hydrate. Mm -hmm. If you force hydration, mm -hmm. you put more stress in the body. Uh, okay. There's a lot of symptoms for people that might be transitioning, mm -hmm. like people who sleep longer than they're awake. Mm -hmm. Their steps are getting yeah. shorter. Yeah. They are choosing different, they're making different food choices. Mm -hmm. They're not eating beef anymore. They're now they're eating poultry or fish, mm -hmm. or they only want ice cream. Mm -hmm. There's little signs that people are declining and they miss it. And then they're in damage control. Mm -hmm. We recognize all those signs. Sometimes I mean a, a culmination of all these different symptoms and variables, mm -hmm. ooh, this person's declining. Yeah. So you're seeing things that the, the family's not seeing, A, because you have trained eyes. Right. And because, uh, not that you're not emotionally involved, but you're, you're at a higher level and be able to see the, the different relationships and the interactions that are going on and, and make a more objective word call choices. on things. It can be more as simple as word choices. Yeah. We're working with a family and a family member's word choices, the way they communicate, it's changing. Mm -hmm. Is there diminishing? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little triggers. Now, it might be something we do a corrective action. Mm -hmm. Hey, I think you should see your doctor about maybe get some help and they help them mm -hmm. maintain. Mm -hmm. Other times it's like, ooh, this person is showing decline also. It happens all the time, yeah. especially with, with, with the older generation. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, dad doesn't want to hang on, his mom's gone. Mm -hmm. And just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But there's an interesting phenomena when it comes to hospice. Mm -hmm. Starting around middle of October, the people who are in hospice, are, are they live longer. They want to live After, through the holidays? Exactly. Really? Yeah. And in, like in the beginning of February, yeah. wow. I don't know how it's other than like, it's like <laughs> a big die-off. People yeah. pass away Jeez. exponentially. Yeah. If hospice is really embraced by everybody, mm -hmm. why can't it be like that all year round? Uh, that's true. Yeah. No, we want to bring people, have that warm feeling all the time. Yeah. So where one day, one good moment, mm -hmm can mean the world to somebody. Mm -hmm. Closure on an unresolved issue with mm -hmm. between brother right. and sister or mother and daughter. Right. Closure is very important and also yeah. regret. Yeah. So in a lot of c cases, hospice mends a lot of bridges for people by opening the communication with social workers, with the chaplains. Yeah. Sometimes a chaplain won't ever say the word God ever. They just mm -hmm. sit there and talk. Mm -hmm. But they have a perspective, mm -hmm. they increase dialogue, mm -hmm. get out. With and it gives family members a chance to come, and, and, and particularly if they're at home in their in an environment, and and talk to the person, and, right. and and really confront whatever issues they may have had in the past. Everybody has, you know, things going on that they may not they may, may want to resolve. It's a good time to be able to do that because you know the person's comfortable and they're well cared for. And 
the other stressors are not there. Absolutely, it's, um, it's amazing that stress slows down the healing process. Yeah. So there's studies of, of wound care. A person is stressed out, the wound mm. takes twice as long to heal. Really? Because your cortisol levels way up. Right. Uh, your body doesn't operate efficient, mm -hmm. efficiently. You don't digest your food properly. Mm -hmm. You don't breathe at the proper yeah. rate. You're not relaxed. Right. So if you have better emotional support, mm -hmm. your body can take care of itself a little better. You're not under, mm -hmm. under duress. You're not always, mm -hmm. oh, I'm fighting it. Let's give you some And relief. now here you're talking about emotional support for the whole family. Absolutely. Essentially. It's not just one person. You're looking at the whole family unit, which is really important because people don't realize when they're under stress. <laughs> they don't, you know? They, they people always say, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. But yeah. you're not. You're not. I, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. I've used, said that phrase a billion times in my life. Yeah. Oh, how are you doing about that? I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah. People want to take it on the chin. They want to bury it. They want to compartmentalize. Right. But the reality is, it's still gnawing at you. Yeah. We yeah. want to release that gnaw and give you more, more of, a, of, a, of a zen feeling, of right. feeling good about things, yeah. the warm and fuzzies. Um, then you can be emotionally available to your, to your loved ones mm -hmm. also if you're not right. blocked up. Right. So it's, uh, Haas is, oh, it's so depressing. Yeah. I know it's not. Yeah. What's better than helping a person when they need it the most right. and doing a great job and having a person perhaps have better quality days have dignity rather than being than, than suffering or being insecure are not even having the answers of what what's next yeah that's true it's true so for me it's, it's exhilarating yeah. to do the right thing and it's very empowering yeah one last question about sort of the the mechanism of it because you mentioned hospice will come in so what's the is there a sort of a set frequency do you come once a day do you come once a week somebody from hospice that's a great or, question or is it just People depends on basically you know, <laughs> The patient yeah. is our boss. Okay. So being predictive and intuitive, mm -hmm. what the patient needs, if it means we go in there, every, we have a patient right now, we get there at 6.30 in the morning, we help her get up in the morning, get her dressed, feed her breakfast. Really? Yeah. Five days a week, sometimes six. Wow. The family is available on the weekends, so they help us mm -hmm. right. on the weekends. Plus, they want to be involved. They don't want a third right. party. Right. But a lot of times, we are the family. Yeah. But... Um, we're available. We're, we're intimately involved with all okay. those processes. And if we have to go back and bathe somebody who's had an issue, okay, we'll go back in the afternoon. Wow. We'll check in. Okay. You need to go. I mean, unfortunately, the worst thing about being a nurse mm -hmm. or a hospice worker, the most difficult thing. Imagine the snow we had three or four years ago. Yeah. It's two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's howling. Yeah. You just knocked off your car, the snow, <laughs> five minutes later your car is buried again, yeah. and you get a call that somebody's passed away. Yeah. You get dressed, you know, clear your car out, and I would say most nurses have SUVs with four-wheel drive yeah, or all-wheel drive. Yeah, absolutely. Around they're, here they do. They're going yeah. to the house, they're with the family, they're yeah. hugging them, they're embracing, they help prepare the body, process, sign the death certificate, Wow. and then they go home, and they get up two hours later to go back to work. That's a tough day. I could see, though, that I, I hadn't even thought about the part where the person actually passes. What happens? Because I know it's a shock for the family. And if it happens in the middle of the night, I mean, I wouldn't know myself what to do. If it happened to my parents, you know? What do you do? You stay there with the body all by yourself all night? But in this case, well, no, we'll, you have somebody coming over. Right. The, the, appropriate, to, the appropriate fashion for hospice is my mom just passed. Yeah. We're there as fast as we can physically get yeah, there. Yeah, that's got to be huge, though. And we're though. there until your mom is taken. Uh, yeah. It's an, usually an ambulance. Right. They're, t they're, 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 um, um, they're honored and respected for the right. whole process. Right. And the nurse doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. She stays with you. Yeah. And then if you need relief, we'll have our chaplain come in, our social worker, work with the mm -hmm. family. Sometimes there's, a, there's a, um, a perception with a family member who is not quite 100% with their, with their faculties, and we have to do extra counseling for the, for the loved ones. They don't quite understand that my wife's gone. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. work even harder after the fact yeah. because yeah. we want that person to feel safe and secure. Right. The survivors, 1,000 people a week on example, have 20 friends. That's 20,000 people that are affected yeah. by a loss. Yeah. Each month, that's 40,000 people. Right. 40,000 people times 12. Right. It's a huge number. Almost a half a million people. Yeah. And Massachusetts each year right. are affected by a loss of, and really directly or directly. Mm -hmm. And then what do you say to people? Mm -hmm. Right. Sorry for your loss. Right. Or what a great life he mm -hmm. had or she had. 
it was it, you're you're an amazing person. Yeah. Every tear <clears throat> is a badge of honor of gratitude that that person meant something. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling pains of loss, it really means that that person meant something to you. That's, that's a beautiful true. expression. It, it is, it is. It can't be lost. We no. look at it wrong, the wrong way. Right. So, oh my gosh, how am I going to get by with that? Well, live by that person's examples mm -hmm. and be, wow, that I have a great wife or a mm -hmm. great husband or a great mm -hmm. son or daughter mm -hmm. or great grandfather or mother. Reflect with gratitude and appreciation yeah. and know mm -hmm. that we're going to take care of you also. Well, this has been really great. We have to wind up the segment in just a few minutes, but I just want to express, I think the one thing that stood out for me when you, when you talked about this was the fact that you're, you really treat both the individual person going through it and the family with a great deal of dignity. And I think that's very, very important because you, you know, sometimes you look, you know, you see in a hospital situation, people don't have that. Some people dying alone. There's not, it's just, it's so sad because right. the, their dignity is it's just not being honored in the way it should be. And I, it looks like that you folks really, that's a key core co value for you is to preserve that kind of dignity for the person even after the very Nobody's end. alone, the family's not alone, right. you don't have to be alone, right. we're a phone call away, you call us anytime you need help. I talk to families all the time, you go, yeah. how do you do that with all, I was like, I do what I can do. Yeah, you do what you can so, do. It, yeah. But it's it, it's uh, very empowering to me to be have the ability to do these things, yeah. Good. and to see a, a family grieving properly. Yeah, yeah. You know, those stages important. of grief, it's it's yeah. difficult. Yeah. But with, with the perspective, it really makes a difference. It does. Michael, thank you very much for joining Good us to today. See you. Thank you everybody for watching this. Uh, Arthur and I will be back uh, next week or next month with a new show. But I thought this was again. I hope you get a lot of it, a lot out of this. I know I learned a lot today about this, and it's, it's such an important aspect. Thank you again. Take care.